According to a recent news article, only about 2% of people use ChatGPT every single day. Now, as a data scientist, I use ChatGPT on a daily basis. In fact, I think it's even 2 x my productivity in certain areas. And in this video, I want to break down exactly how I use it and how it's made me more efficient in my job. Let's get into it. One of my favorite prompts to use is the explain it like I'm five. I use this prompt all the time because I find the outputs from this prompt from ChatGPT is often better than many of the online resources I would get from a Google search. As an example, let's ask ChatGPT to explain to us recurrent neural networks as if we were five years old. Explain to me recurrent neural networks. And you'll see this output is giving me an example here. Imagine your brain is like a smart train with lots of cars and each car remembers what happened to the past. And it goes through this whole story and it's basically just framing it in such a nicer way than I would if I was just simply Googling it. And then what we can do is that, let's say we, we assume the persona of a data scientist. And now, you know, it gave me the intuition behind it. And now what's going to do is going to give me the mathematics behind it. So you see, I'm clearly building up my own picture of what RNN is. And you see here, give me all the notations for the weight matrices, the inputs, the hidden states, all, all of the stuff behind RNNs. And what's really useful about using ChatGPT like this is that it's almost like your own personal tutor and it can give you outputs and examples the way you just like it to learn the best from. I find this way more efficient than simply just Googling and trying to find that one article video that will explain it to you in the way you understand. It's no secret that tech professionals hate writing unit tests. They're tedious and they're quite boring. However, we need to write them in order to make sure our code is robust and that it's up to production standards. Now, what I use ChatGPT for is that let's say I have a function. I can use ChatGPT to run this function for me and also create unit tests for it. And because it create all the boilerplate code, it saves me a lot of time with setting up the test and I can just focus on designing the test so that it catches any edge cases within my function. Let's go through an example again. Let's say I want ChatGPT to generate me a Fibonacci sequence, right? So create me Fibonacci function. So we're just gonna let this run and this is the output, right? Very nice Fibonacci sequence. I'm sure a lot of you have done this before on Python code. Now, let's say we want to generate some unit tests for this function. I could do it all from scratch or I'll just ask ChatGPT to do it. So if I write, now I personally like PyTest, so I'll say using PyTest. And you'll see now it'll generate me some functions and uh, sorry, PyTest tests, and it will go through all the examples. And you see, it's pretty much done all of the hard work for me. And it's even telling me how I would run it in my terminal, in my IDE. But again, this is another example of how I would use ChatGPT to really improve my productivity because I can get the test and the structure of the test really quickly and then focus on actually measuring what the test is meant to do, which is the edge cases and ensure my function works as expected. Creating and visualizing plots can take quite a long time. I've spent hours once just mucking around with matplotlib just to make it like a multi-plot with different lines on it. It took forever and I don't recommend it. Now with ChatGPT, I can simply just give it my data in a CSV or Excel file and ask it to generate a plot for me. And it will generate the plot in the window and it will also show me the code underlying it in Python. So let's go through an example. In this case, I'm gonna to go to Netflix and download this Netflix movies, TV shows data set. So I'm just gonna download it and then I'm going to unzip it really quick. You'll see it here, Netflix free CSV. I've actually pre-downloaded it, as you can see. And all I'm going to do is I'm going to add it into the ChatGPT window, as you can see here. And I'm just going to write, explain to me. And it's just going to do its thing. You see, it's already given me like the how it looks, which is amazing. And then it's just going to analyze some Python code. Well, it's going to write the Python code to output the file. It's going to show me what the data looks like, then it's going to do a summary of it. As you can see here, 
it's telling me what each column is in the data set, which is great. From looks of things, everything here looks correct, which is brilliant. So now I have this data and it's read it in, and I can even see the code like this, which is amazing. Um, I can now just ask it to generate me a plot. So let's say I want to know uh, for each show ID, what country it was shot in. So let's, let's do that. Let's say uh, generate me which breaks, breaks out the show ID per country. Again, it may misinterpret this prompt I gave it. So let's see what it comes out with. Again, it showed me the code that I use. Again, matplotlib. Now it's just going to focus on generating the output. Let's see how long it takes. And there we go. So it's giving me the output. Obviously, the United States has the most uh, shot films. Makes sense. And then what does it say? Here's a bar chart that breaks down the number of shows for the top 10 countries. So it's only plotted the top 10. But as you can see, this plot is pretty good. It's very nice. Uh, it's clear what's happening. And it generated it in a few seconds. This will take me a lot longer if I was doing it myself. So generating plots is something I really recommend you use. Even if you don't know how to code, you showed you how easy it is here. You don't need to know Python for to use ChatGPT to generate plots and do analysis for you. I really recommend you try this out if any part of your job is about looking at data and summarizing it. Sometimes I'm a bit lazy when I'm writing my code and it's not up to a really good standard. This can introduce bugs and also be very hard for someone to understand what's going on. I often ask ChatGPT to help me refactor and tidy the code so it's up to a better standard and it's a lot nicer read for someone going over it. So let's say I want to take in this kind of script I've got from my uh, GitHub repo which is just how we turn a time series to be stationary. From an old video, it doesn't really matter too much but this is kind of what the code looks like. As you can see, it's not badly written, but I haven't written it to be, you know, to a good level because, well, it's not production code. Anyway, if we now send it to ChatGPT, and let's say I want, uh, can you please make this code production standard as tidy as I often find um, making it say or telling it make the code production standard is what kind of makes it a lot better. Like it will add in a lot of the requirements like PEP8, uh, linters. It will just make it a more bare piece than if you simply just said, make it tidy. So we input this. And as you can see, it's got more, con it's defined some constants, added OS to make directories. It added like new functionality to make the code a lot more readable. And the plot data function is added in a doc string with the parameters, which is great. And as you can see, it's just made it a lot more of a coherent. And I'll give you the examples added, constants, directory creation, function documentation, code readability. And it's just made it a lot cleaner. So therefore, it's less prone to bugs and problems. And for someone who wants to understand what's going on, it's a lot easier for them. If you want to know more about how I am becoming a more productive data scientist, then make sure you check out my weekly newsletter, Additional Data. I send it every Monday morning and it's all about my thoughts and experiences as a practicing data scientist. If that sounds interesting, then make sure you click the description below to check it out.